know expire is the word of God. It's forever. Power expires. There were billions of yesterday that your children are suffering today. Be careful what you do. Why will you give your enemy advantage and be disadvantaged in the issues of life? You showed you can. Praise God. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. Prenez la Bible. Come with me. To the book of Numbers. Avec moi dans le livre de Numbers. Are you there? Vous y êtes? Numbers chapter 21. Number chapter 21. From verse 21. Verse 21. Numbers 21. Verse 21. If you dare read for me, please. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we be past thy borders. And Sihon would not allow Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Anon unto Jabok, even unto the children of Ammon. For uh, amen. Go back to verse 23, everybody. Repartir Let's have the verse 23 projected. He said, Sihon would not suffer Israel to do what? To pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. Somebody say, let me pass. Let me pass. That's my message this morning. Let me pass. Verse 24. Verse 24. Verse 24, and Israel smote him with the, with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Anon unto Jabok, even unto the children of Ammon, for the border of the children, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. And do only what he alone is able to do. And I pray for our viewers around the world that distance is not a barrier. Wherever you are watching from, I welcome you to this to this all-round all covenant day of all-round settlement. That the Lord give you settlement on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear somebody shout a big amen. Sit down. Let me pass. But they will not let them pass. The people of Israel coming out from the land of Egypt. And remember, whilst they were coming out, we're talking about over 2 million people in droves. If two million people move in droves through your country, it will be like they have come to take over. And it came to pass. The people of Israel sent emissaries ahead of them to go negotiate with the people to let them know we are not here, we will not touch your water, we will not touch anything, we will not touch your cattle nor anything. We just need a passage from you. Let us pass. And the king of Zion replied, we will not let you pass. In other words, we are ready for battle. Hear me, child of God, there are people you cannot negotiate with. 
there are people you cannot you cannot make peace with because they already make up their mind not to make peace with you they make up their mind to fight you no matter what you do no matter what you do so the people the people of israel they approach these guys and say please let us pass we are not for peace I mean, we are not for we are not for war. We are not here to make trouble. And the the the, 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 the he sent a message back. He said, "Go, tell them we will not let you pass to your worst. Do your worst. We are here to stop you." And the Bible said something happened. But the king of Zion forgot something. That in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5, he said, No man born of a woman will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Before you, before you, before you, before you attempt to fight a man, understand the prophetic mandate that is upon that man. I pray for somebody today. I release the same prophetic oil. Amen. May no man, may no woman be able to stop your mission. <laughs> Look at it. He said, there shall not any man, there shall not any man, whether tall, whether short, whether evil, whether good, whether satanic, it doesn't matter who they are. There is a prophetic mandate upon the nation of Israel. There is a mandate upon their prophet Joshua. He said, no man would be able to stand you that means any day any man try to stand you the first destruction the first shame i came to prophesy on somebody because you are connected to this mandate i don't know how you came i don't know what brought you but for the fact you step into this place the same oil is on your head i decree and i declare by the power of the holy ghost any man that has stopped you before they can stop you again no man can stop you no woman can stop you no altar can stop you no power can stop you no demon can stop you that devil is a liar i prophesy over you from today anyone blocking you anyone standing against you that far not to let you pass by the power of the holy ghost i clear them away Clear them away. I clear them away. I clear them away. Set fire. Sit down. I clear them away. They saw this guy. They said, We will not let you pass. I want you to understand from today that there are people who hate you because you are prospering. Uh -huh. There are people who hate you because you are advancing. And there are people, no matter, they don't know you. You don't need to offend them. They already they hated you from afar. They hated you. They hated you. They don't, they don't like you. They don't want to see you. If, they, if there is anything they can do to remove you from the face of the earth, if there is anything they can do to hinder you, they will always do it. Because they hate what you carry. And the power in you irritates their demon. I hear you, Papa. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So what you carry irritates their demon. Anytime they see you, they try to blackmail you. They try to say all things, all kinds of things about you. But they don't have the final say. There is a mandate on your head. No man, no man. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee. All the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so... Yes, sir. As I was with Moses, so I shall be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that battle you are going through currently, God said I should remind you, there is a mandate on your head. He says he will not fail you. He will not let you down. It means he will fight your battle. I came to announce to somebody this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost, that mandate has not changed. The oil has not changed. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. When God says yes no man can say no when god opens your door no man can shut your door when god says yes no man can say no god is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side lift up your legs and shut fire shut fire when anybody reminds you that you can go forward when any wicked person say i will not let you prosper i will not let you have children remind them that there is an oil on your head <laughs> remind them remind them that there is an oil there is a spoken prophet i mean there is a spoken prophecy on your head that says no man no man no man there shall not there shall not, there shall not, no man will be able to stand you. No man, no man, no man. It's not saying they will not stand, they will stand, it means they will fail. Yes, sir. It's not saying they are not going to block you, they will block you, it means they will be defeated. Uh -huh. He said in one way they will come. He did not say they will not come. But in seven words, yes. they shall scatter, yes. they shall fire. because of time you know the king here we are talking about Sion King Sion now as I study I discovered that Sion means circle the spirit of circle that means there are people they will not advance they will not let you advance they will not advance they will not let you advance it's a spirit of circle he said we are here that means we are circling around. we are circling around this place we have been circling around so when you come you are not going to move anywhere you will remain the same at the same spot where you are you to continue to circle i don't know what is circling you the spirit of circle i don't know the spirit of Zion that is blocking you that is causing you to circle around today i prophesy you are breaking out of that circle yeah. i can hear your amen yeah. there are different kind of demonic manipulations where the spirit of sound blocks you it makes you that anytime something enters your hand even before the money enters your hand problem takes away the money but as soon as the money finishes the problem stops there are some of you anytime you get a job you must lose the job some of you anytime you take in you must lose it some of you anytime something good leading to something that had to do with your destiny when it's about to manifest the king of Zion blocks it you are very close but they will not let you enter you are very close but they will not let you be you are looking for something God has given you a spoken words he asked you to go and possess it but the king of Zion said I will not let you go I came to speak on from behalf of somebody I came to prophesy for somebody who is this king of Zion that will not let you go you came to the place of your business you could not go beyond that level because there is a king of Zion your family could not go forward anymore financially you are moving around cycle because there is a king of Zion maritally you are moving around cycle because there is a king of Zion some of you you marry but the, the king of Zion in your family says marry don't walk they must bring you back but I came today by the power of the Holy Ghost by the prophetic and the apostolic mantle upon my head I break somebody out of that cycle Shut yes. Yes. yes! Sit down for a moment. Assoyez-vous pour un moment. 
That's what it means, circle. Ça veut dire le cercle. Le cercle. That's what it means. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? You got close to your place of promotion. They block you. Circle. The king of Zion. We root them out. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 24. God gave, the, God gave command to the people of Israel. He said to them, go and take over the land. He said, rise here up. Take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sion the Amorites. He sound aware of this prophecy. He said, I have given into thy hand Sion the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and his land, begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Now, two things stand for me. He said, rise ye up. Don't sit down again. Don't be afraid of the battle. Face the battle. Some of you, you, you need to defeat your Zion before you get to your promised land. Remember, God said to the people of Israel when he spoke to Moses, he said, Moses, I am, you will lead your people to the promised land. You have not yet gotten to the promised land. And that's why there are people you see as successful people. But God is angry with them because what we call success is not success in the calendar, in the, in the, in the equation of God, in his original destiny equation. That is not, that is not success. Now, remember this. Watch me. Many of you, where you are is not where you are supposed to be. But you are rejoicing that you are successful. I'll show you that that thing you are saying, what you are saying is not success. Because success is not a destination. Success is a journey. Success is not a destination. Success is a journey. In other words, you don't get to anywhere and say, this is my, my, my destination. No, for when it comes to success, you keep advancing. You keep advancing. You keep advancing. If you can count one, you can count two. If you can count three, you can count four. If you can count five, you can count six. If you can count seven, you can count eight. It's not a destination. Don't get to anywhere in life and say, hey, I finally arrived. No man has arrived. Though some mediocres agree that they have arrived. Now you know those days. Especially my late senior brother. He used to beat me a lot every time we get our results. From primary school, secondary school. When I come back home, what's your position? Third. Third. He will beat me. He said, you are supposed to carry first. Because he knows I have the capacity. But there are other people, out of 50 people, they carry 25. Their parents are happy. He try. Are you getting what I'm saying? He try. Because that is what they want to settle for. That is mediocrity. So they are happy. Nobody. Are you getting what I'm saying? But... Ah, me carried that they beat me Joanna he said I know your capacity I know you can do it better he will flog me I'll be vetting up and down just be grumbling up and down but later I go back truly what he's saying is true Resting my out of 50 people in the class, I came out told, and they are flogging me. He said, No, I know your capacity. You are very intelligent and brilliant. Then he taught me how to put my two legs inside a bowl of water to read. <laughs> you read. So that you don't just you don't fall asleep. The next time I came out second. He said, no, I know your capacity. But you know, some other people, they are happy that they came at eight. Their parents are happy. Ah, my Peking try. They came at 20 out of 50. Their parents are happy that they came out that way. Now, the same way it is. This was my late elder brother who also stand as a father to me, but in, you know, in his own right. But he says, no, I'm not satisfied. Now, you 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? You built a house, you bought a car, you are living comfortable, and you said you have arrived. And God, who is your father, is angry. He said, no, I know what I put in you. That is not your capacity. And God said, no, you can go forward beyond here. That's not what I put in you. Any other person can be okay, but I am not okay. What I'm seeing is is tiny part of what God gave to me. Small. Don't rest. So it's not a destination. It's a journey. Keep moving. Anywhere you come, you meet obstacle. Don't rest. Don't fall. Fight a good fight of faith. He said, rise here up. Take your journey. Take your what? Journey. He didn't say your destination. He said, take your journey. Then in the midst of your journey, he said, pass over the river. Anon. You will meet some river. You will need to cross. You will cross two rivers. The rivers might be problems of life. The rivers might be hatred. The rivers might be all kinds of problems. It's a cross. You are not supposed to wait and say, oh, the river, the, 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 the wave, and this one. No, cross. Kabbalah Tayaba. Even Jesus one time in, in, in Mark chapter 5, he said, let us cross over to the other side. You have been on this side for too long. I came with a mandate of settlement to cross you over to the other side. I prophesy on somebody by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are crossing over. Pass over the river. Behold, I have given into thy hands, Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land, begin to possess it, contend with him in battle. God says, I have given you, he said, but begin to contend in battle. Nobody wins without a fight. Nobody becomes a champion without a battle. Victory is a product of a fight. If you want to win, you need to keep fighting. If you must get to where you are going to in life, you will meet many kings. Do you know how many kings they met on the way? They fought a lot of kings. But the kings never knew one thing about the prophetic mandate on them. And Paul was saying to Timothy the other day, he said, do not take for granted the prophetic word that came upon your head. Do not take for granted. God says you are going to be a multi-billionaire. Don't take it for granted. Even when you try to meet, when you meet every battle on the way that suggests that you can never be one, don't stop. Because many a times we misunderstand our journey for destination. A man by the name Joseph had a dream. In his dream, he said, I saw 11 stars, including the moon and the sun. They bowed down and worshipped me. Which translates to 11 of his brothers, including his mother and the father. And the Bible says, yet he dreamt again. He dreamt again. Because he's not supposed to rest. He's supposed to continue to dream. Continue to dream. You did the first one, you fail. It doesn't mean you are a failure. In every fall, there is a provision for the rising. It's a seven times the righteous will fall. Seven times they will rise again. You fell only once, you are still there. Rise up quickly. Look how he said, rise, rise. That means they, they, at a time, they, they were confused. They were still, they were, they were at the same place. God said, rise. You are falling. Even if you fall, he said you will rise. Seven times shall the righteous fall. God said, in that seven times, I also give provision for seven times. If you, if you, if you fall, rise again. If you fall, rise again. If you fall, rise again. Don't make the job easy for your enemies. Micah 7, 8, he said, my enemies do not rejoice over me when I fall. Don't rejoice too quickly. For when I fall, I will rise again. For when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my right. You are falling, but you will not remain there. 
I say you fell but you will not remember you will rise again you will rise to the occasion you will be celebrated very soon in the name of Jesus I release the grace I release the grace for celebration I release the grace for mighty things I release the grace for financial turnaround I release the grace for international open door I release the grace for marital breakthrough I release the grace for longevity I release the grace for turnaround I release the grace for settlement I release the grace for promotion I release the grace for victory I release the grace for children I release the grace for fruitfulness I release grace for expansion in ministry I release grace somebody receive it now I receive the grace Kabbalah Hayamasha. Grace is released. Yeah. Amen. Whatever you are doing, do it quickly. You need to listen to this. Grace is released. Yeah. Amen. Grace for everything you had wanted to achieve. Yes. Is released. Amen. Oh, you don't hear me. I'm not. We are, we are not joking. Amen. I said, grace is released. Yeah. Grace for twins. Yeah. Grace for the miraculous. Yeah. Grace for signs and wonders. Yeah. Grace for promotion. Yeah. Grace for speed. Yeah. Grace for deliverance. Yeah. Grace for increase. Yeah. Grace for restoration. Yeah. Grace for restoring lost years in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Somebody shout settlements. Settlement. On every side, on every side, say I am settled. I am settled in my family. My family. I am settled. I am in my career. In my career. I am settled. I am settled. In my finances. In my finances. My health is settled. settled. My relationship is settled. settled. My marriage my is settled. Just settled. Settled. Sit down. Where were they? They left where? Where were they coming from? Huh? Where they left where? Egypt. They left Egypt. Ils ont quitté l'Égypte. Egypt is what is left behind. L'Égypte c'est ce qu'elle laissé derrière. You know what God did? That's what the Seigneur a fait. Listen carefully, everybody. God. Le Seigneur. When he saw, when the people cried and murmured, and they saw their enemies very close to them, and this is the Red Sea, they could not advance further. And Moses cried unto Elohim, and God said, What is in your hand? It's a staff. And he said, Stretch it forth, and the waters will be divided. And the waters divided. And the people of the Bible told us that the people of Israel walked through on a dry ground. And then Pharaoh and his men attempted the same thing. Now, while they were walking, the enemies were still advancing. And God said to Moses, Stretch your rod towards that water. And the Bible said the water covered again. And God caused all of them to drown. So that there will be no remnant for them to go back to Egypt. What are you leaving behind in Egypt? Because if you want to advance, you must leave Egypt completely. What are the Egypt you are still carrying? They say if you want to travel far, travel, you have to travel light. You want to travel fast, you travel light. You can't carry many baggages with you. Travel light. Do you know? When you get to the when you are traveling, maybe you have three luggages. You have three luggages or four. Now listen. What you don't leave behind, you will pay for. What do I mean? What you don't leave behind? Some people are coming out of Egypt, but they refuse to burn the bridge behind them. 
You must learn how to burn the bridge if you must enter to the land flowing with, with milk and honey. You must learn how to burn the bridge behind you. You come to the level in your life. You say, I don't need this bridge anymore. You burn the bridge. What, what bridge are we talking about? What are you supposed to, what did you leave behind in Egypt? Did you come, are you trying to come to the other land, but you are still carrying the sins of Egypt? You are still carrying adultery. You are still carrying fornication. You are still carrying cheating. You are still carrying malice. You are still carrying all forgiveness. And you want to go to the, to the other side. You will keep on paying because you are not traveling light. You are not traveling light so much unforgiveness so much bitterness so much cheating so much lying if you must press forward burn the bridge you have to come to the level where you tell yourself i don't need this bridge anymore somebody gave you gave your life to jesus and you you say you are born again and you are holding a contact of a man you were having a man or a woman you were having illicit affair with that you know that is ungodly you are saying in case of tomorrow you don't need it because if you refuse to drop this thing life will be charging you because you are carrying extra baggage life will be charging you life will be charging you excess luggage do you know whether you are traveling by first class or by business class or by economy they have the limit of luggages you must carry that you cannot carry beyond and what happens when you carry more they charge you you have traveled outside the country before when you are checking in when you go to the when you put your luggage those people at the counter they wait if it's more than the if it's more than the limit if it's excess you pay you pay if you want to get to where you are going to travel lights because there are some people the problem is not the king of Zion the king of Zion is not too strong not to be defeated he can be defeated but your excess luggage will not allow you to defeat the king of Zion the reason why the king of Zion is still resisting you is because you are carrying too many weights where you don't need them you must put them aside Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 when you are born again there are certain laws you must not live by again you must not live by the law of death but there is the law of the spirit of life he said there is he said there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 2 that means you can be born again and still walk after the flesh he said there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit by the spirit that means you can be a born again but you are walking in flesh the bible wonders he said the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal he said for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death if jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death why do we carry the baggage why lay it aside second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. you got to lay it aside because what happened look at this let me show you how this thing works in the spirit from this physical uh, uh, description i will give you do you know if you are traveling are you aware there are people every time they travel they just go with their with their hand huh with their hand luggage they don't carry anything more than that when they are alive from the plane they are just trolling 
Do you know your, you can spend another 30 to 45 minutes waiting for your luggage? Especially if you travel by a very busy airport. Meanwhile, the person who travel light had got into their destination. You carry every luggage. They will charge you at the airport. The airline will charge you. And you know, they charge you so much, eh? That you say these people they are insensitive. That means they are they are and they are discouraging you not to carry excess luggage. Somebody say, I hear you. He said, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Why you must lay this thing apart is that a time will come. Everything we do here, whether good or bad, that is the judgment day. We will sit before the judgment seat of Christ. What will stop you from coming into the... He said we will be judged according to what we have done. According to that he have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Whether it be good or bad. That means, whilst we are here, we must be careful number one if we must get to our our journey our we are you, you know it's not destination it's journey from the day you were born you journeyed into this world till the day you will die the journey continues you continue to journey to eternity whether you will go to hell or whether you will go to heaven the journey continues whether your journey to heaven or your journey to hell where do you want to where do you want this journey to end where do you, you must make up your mind that's the reason why you look back you say i don't need this contact in my phone anymore delete it because every useless contact that encourages you to sin should not be in your phone burn the bridge don't say oh tomorrow i might need a bridge you are not ready yet that means you are supposed to go forward what happened to the wife of lot that looked back she was turned to so in this race backward never forward ever i see you advancing from today so i want somebody to make up his or her mind this morning and say as long as i am here i am burning the bridges i, I will be useful for god i will not go back to my vomit anymore if i must defeat Zion, Zion is not strong Zion is not powerful but when i carry heavy and excess luggages Zion becomes powerful <laughs> There is a way that seemeth good in the eyes of men, but the end therefore is destruction. May you know, may your journey here not be wasteful. May you get to your may you may your journey end well. And may you not make hell. May you make heaven in the name of Jesus. How can you be a child of God? You have contact of people you go to club with every week. You are, in, you are going to club. You are a child of God. What do they do there? They praise God there. They worship God there. They evangelize there. They glorify Satan there.
We must stand before him in judgment seat of Christ. We will be judged according to what we have done. Whether it be good, be good or bad. Be it 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 good or bad. You are dropping it off. Yeah. I don't like the way I say you are dropping it off. Yeah. Oh boy, more meat for that place. More go shark. Me, shark, dear palo. So do what? Burn the bridge. If we are not discussing Jesus and what brings money, forget it. Can I hear him, somebody? Amen. And whilst you are here, child of God, whilst you are burning the bridges, God will ask you, when you appear before the judgment seat of Jesus, he will ask you why you are here on earth, that that's the talent I gave to you, what did you do with it? What did you contribute to my kingdom? He said, go and make all men disciples. Disciples are not just normal Christians, they are people who come to the place of leadership in church. He said, Be my witness to Judah, to, to Jerusalem, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And you are not a witness. Every one of us, we are God's children, we are sons, we have benefits. But not every one of us have reward. Reward comes in the place of service. But benefit come by you being born into the family as a son. But that does not give you reward. So you can be a son in the house. You have benefit and you have reward. Your reward comes through service. What is witness? You want to defeat the king, you want to de defeat Zion, who makes you walk around circle, but Jesus is not in your agenda. You don't talk to people about Jesus. You don't talk, you don't you don't bring people. You don't you it's our duty every day. Talk to someone about Jesus. Invite them to your church to come and meet Jesus. You don't need to quote scripture, share testimony. I want you to get uh, I, I don't want to just give you mere definition of it I want from the English man who brought the word witness to see what witness means you testify what you witness in the court in the court they said do you have a witness who is a witness a witness is somebody that has what somebody that had the knowledge of what happened who was there when it happened so they bring you to the witness boss. You said I was there when that man shot that man. Am I correct? We are, if we are witnesses, what are we supposed to do? We go everywhere to make the more the popular Jesus more popular. To depopulate the kingdom of darkness. If we go through this earth. And when they open our account in heaven, there is nothing in there is nothing in there. We might go to hellfire. Because for this purpose and for this reason, we came. He says, Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto thee. So for all round settlement to come, all round, all round. Now that is what I mean. All round settlement. Something is tied to the all round settlement. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added. Every order. Every order. Health. Business. Your career. Your finances. Your relationship. Your marriage. Seek him first. Because we will not be here forever. Because it's a journey. 
Every journey has end. If you have it, get it. Get it. To witness is an attestation of a fact or an event. An attestation of a fact. So you saw it, you witness it. How can you see the goodness of God? You don't go outside to tell people. Have Jesus. You don't need to quote scripture. According to John chapter 4 verse 29. Jesus met the woman. The woman never had knowledge of Jesus before. She did not need to quote scripture. She went everywhere saying, come, come, come see a man which taught me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? You, you are seeing, you are having a counter of the miraculous here every day. You are having a counter of the prophetic every day. Jesus did not raise death there. It was only a prophecy. The woman ran with it. What are you running with from everything you have seen and received here? From God. Part of the reason why all settlement must happen must you must seek the source of all settlement. Seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and every other thing shall be what? Added unto you. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I can hear your amen. Amen. And when that is done, grace to make this thing happen will not be released. In the next, in the next 60 seconds, I want to address the issue of disgrace in your life. Where there is shame. There is a grace that, that, that destroys the disgrace. There is a shame. Are you here? I mean, there is a disgrace that eliminates shame. When you begin to work, you come into reward. You, you, are, you have a benefit by being a child of God right now, but you come into reward. And your reward comes through service. But let me quickly release this grace upon you. Put your right hand on your head. Say from today. From today. I receive grace. I receive grace to advance. To advance. I receive grace. I receive grace for advancement. To advancement. I receive grace. I receive grace to go forward. To go forward. In the name of Jesus. Shout yes. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse eight. The grace will be made available for you. The grace for wonders, the grace for financial exploit shall be released for you in the name of Jesus. How shall not and God is able to make all grace abound toward you? All grace. All grace. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Receive grace. Amen. For all unsettlements. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 talked about this great grace. In the name of Jesus, grace to make everything happen. Grace for international door. Grace for the next level. Grace to do all things. Grace that makes things work. Grace is better. Yeah. Grace is better. Apostle Paul said, God, take away this thing from me. And God said, my grace is sufficient. But God and Paul did not tell us what it, what it, what it, it was that we were talking about. They never told us. He said, God, I don't like this thing. God said, don't worry, grace cover. We don't know what it is. The Bible did not tell us. <laughs> Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Receive grace. May the grace to do mighty things. May the grace to expand your business. The grace to know God. The grace to pray. The grace to do exploit. The grace to pray and not be tired. The grace to wake up at midnight and pray and speak in tongues. The grace to overcome sin. The grace to live in holiness. The grace to come into his presence. For they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. May the grace to do exploit be released upon you. Those of you standing, I prophesy the grace for exploit, the grace for exploit be released on your head. Amen. Musala Pataya. 
Tu pato sha. Zagada belagados. Mulato sha pata ha. Gadivrento bradia mashata. Lakatoba. Liborobo. Receive grace. Second Corinthians chapter eight verse nine talks about dimensions of grace. Before the end of this service, what you came here that looks impossible that you are not able to do, by the time you go back, you will see yourself functioning unusually. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that yet through his poverty might become rich. Listen. Listen. Two major things will happen in your life from now. Amen. Number one, you are going to be exempted from sickness. Amen. Number two, the yoke of poverty breaks in your life now. Why? He said, he said he became poor that yet through his poverty. In theology, it's called divine exchange. That means what you have, I exchange it for what you don't have. That what you have, I now have it. That what you don't have, I give to you. It's called divine exchange. Now, now listen. Why did I say this? By the authority as a prophet, I say this that after today from now, that none of you is permitted to be sick anymore. Yay! You know what? He said himself took our infirmity away. If he took, who gave you the one you have? himself took away our infirmity and by his stripes we are here this man jesus the king of kings the king of kings the prince of peace came from a throne from a country, from a kingdom that has no resemblance with any other kingdom in the world, all over. The Bible told us in the street of that country called heaven. The streets are made with gold. No quota. As rich as Saudi Arabia, the king of Brunei, the uh, 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 United Arab Emirates, they don't have gold on their streets but in the kingdom of heaven the bible said the streets are made with gold the bed the bed they are made with gold the doors are made with gold the stools are made with gold everything in heaven is gold and then the the, the one who is in charge of the economy who owns the economy of that kingdom now left that place and came here with all this wealth all these riches then he said he saw your condition the way you are that what was given to you before was stolen from you remember today we have gold here on earth Adam used to have gold in the, in, in the garden of Eden he has gold, he has all the natural resources, everything he was taken away from him he said the devil came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. John 10 10. He said, But I have come that you may have life and have it more in abundance. And Jesus said, You lost it out of ignorance, out of disobedience. He said, But I have come to die and pay for it once and for all. Then, the, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 4, I mean 13 14, he said, Cause be anyone. Who, who hangs on the tree? Say, cause be that person. So Jesus, that had no cause in his lineage, born of a virgin, born from the womb of a virgin and from a virgin woman, came and carried our curse. 
He said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made cursed for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14. Verse 14. He said that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the whole, the, you know the reason why Jesus came to die? He died for one singular reason, that we might receive the blessings of Abraham. That's all. That's all. Look at it. Look at this. Psalm. He said that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Isaac was the son of the promise. So to come into that, because originally by birth, we are not from Israel. But by the new bet, <laughs> hey, hey, glory! By the new bet, we became born into what our forefathers and our parents never gave us. That's what it means to be born again, and people don't understand it. It doesn't mean you are going to you will go to your mother's womb to be born again. No, it means there is a rebirth in the cross, a place for adoption. You know, today you don't necessarily need to give birth to a child to become the father or, or the mother of that child. There is a process of adoption. Jesus went through the Jesus went through a process better than the process of adoption. Because this process of adoption was bad. Because when a woman is giving birth, what will happen? Look at how we are better. The first thing I learned is that the water will break. And when the water breaks, you will see blood. Now, when Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, for we to be born, he was pregnant of us. That was what took him to the cross. And as they were beating him, he was carrying labor. He was having the labor pangs and the labor pain so that he might deliver us. When it was time for him to deliver, the labor pain was so much because there is something he inherited from the first Adam. He said, from today, the woman shall go through labor pain. So Jesus was greatly in pain because he was about to give birth to us spiritually when he was on the cross and heaven was saying push Jesus, push Jesus but there was no strength left in him to push anymore, push Jesus, then he, he, he summoned the last strength in him and they had to pierce his side, his ribs so that the scriptures might be fulfilled and when they pierce his rib, water gush out of it, when the water gush out, when the woman is giving back to a baby the water breaks so when the water breaks it is me jesus was about to bed when the blood came out i was born yeah hallelujah yeah. glory wow. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. i was born by new bed by new bed by new bed i am not a nigerian <laughs> By new birth, I was assembled. I was I was born in heaven and assembled in Nigeria. You know, he said, look, look at he said, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. That means we are born in heaven, we are assembled here. Made in China, but you are using it in Nigeria. Made in heaven, but you are using me here in Nigeria. Come across! And after the patch, he said, It is finished! If it's finished, you don't need to suffer again. Even though temptation might come, we are born to overcome it. Because we are in the world full of wickedness. First John 5 and verse 19. It says the whole world, the whole world lieth in wickedness. The moment we are born, he said it is finished. What was the reason of those the whole of that SSI? Is that we may become the sons of Abraham. 
the sons and the children of Abraham, Abraham the king of Og the Amorite the Jebusites and all of them can stand him Zion could not stand him today you are breaking forth and getting rest in the name of Jesus Amen. so by the reason of this scripture I declare for everybody here including those watching me by the power of the Holy Ghost you are exempted from every sickness you inherited by birth by the reason of new birth you pass out of that sickness you pass out of that affliction in the name of Jesus he said that will not become the children of Abraham inherit what Abraham inherited so when he was hung on the cross we were exempted from what that was due for us he became the scapegoat according to the book of Leviticus a scapegoat means somebody suffering from what he or she is not deserving of somebody has committed what you are suffering listen today because you are here by the reason of the new covenant struggle is terminated in your life the yoke of poverty is destroyed in the name of jesus the curse of poverty is destroyed in the name of jesus Every spirit of Zion, every spirit of Zion, that will not let you pass, that will not let you go, by the power of the Holy Ghost, they will let you pass, they will let your business pass, they will let your marriage pass, they will let your destiny pass, in your journey they will let you pass, somebody shall let me pass. Second Samuel 7 verse 10. Yes, Samuel. It's coming upon somebody now. Amen. I can hear your amen. Amen. I'm done already. He said, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore. As before time. Verse 11. Give me. He said, and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house to rest from all thy enemies. I prophesy, I receive rest on every side. Amen. Give me verse 1 of that scripture. Give me verse 1 of that scripture. Concerning the king, the Lord gave him rest on every side may you receive settlement on Amen. every side Amen. and it came to pass when the king sat in his house and the lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies put your right hand on your head from every battle from the scion that is stronger than you i break their backbone Amen. In the name of Jesus, receive rest from that sickness. Receive rest from that barrenness. Receive rest from that battle. Receive rest from disappointment. Receive rest from sudden death. Receive rest from that curse. You are exempted by the blood of Jesus. I break you out. I break you free. I break you through. In the name of Jesus, from today I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Lift up your hands. Put your hand on your head. I see words transfer. <laughs> now listen. Écoutez. Emele kwananda sabianda la kruta e pelekroza e soso pato pelingre e ne malato asavia talate e konopatia valakrumbolo po ondebre anda sata e numumbra diama shakula bradia 
Elebrandos kope engra diaba ila marato sabre endeluku aparuta sa ezerembla kuku ampa diaku la masato ezikwa palia daba. Every one of you, listen from your life, evidence will begin. Amen. Anything, listen. As I declare, hear me and hear me well. I carry fire. Yes, sir. Anything that is blocking you, as I declare, nothing will leave you. Hey. Amen. On the basis of Malachi chapter three, Malachi chapter three, verse seventeen, and verse eighteen, I stand on it. To make the life of every one of you evidential. Yeah. Then everyone here who have heart for God, who have heart for the kingdom, you will become a kingdom pillar. Yeah. Amen. And there shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own. As his own son that served him. He said, What will spare you is service. Not everyone that can be spared from poverty, from struggle. But you are spared based on your service. Listen, child of God, don't ever let anything or anybody attack your service. Don't let anything, don't let anybody attack your service. Your service, what service is what corresponds with your reward. Your reward corresponds with your service. Your service corresponds with your reward. Corresponds with what recompense. As a man spared his own son that served him. Listen, listen. Sometimes God expects people to kill the one serving him. Probably because they made mistake. No. God said, because they are serving me at all. You don't understand? He said, I was, I was just as a man, spirit his own servant. When you break glass, broken plate, does your father kill you? Verse 18. Verse 18. And people are judging you, expecting your father to kill you. Maybe because you made a mistake. No. Jesus showed that example. They brought the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. For Jesus to judge. Jesus said, I am not your judge, I am your father. <laughs> Judges judge, but fathers don't judge. He said, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that served God and him that served him not. If you are serving God from today, serve him in righteousness as you have never done. Listen, I prophesy on your life. See, listen, if you are a pastor, if you are a worker in this church, you are a partner. I declare, hear me. Between now, this is we are in the sixth month, right? Between now and another six months, your life must be evidential. Amen. Every cause that stops people from not succeeding in your family, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the new birth, I break you free from it. I declare you exempted from it. I declare you exempted from it. Exempted from it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And every citizen of Grace Nation and everyone who came to this church, especially those of you who are, that are coming for the first time, listen, the blessing of a house connects to you when you make that house your house. You benefit from a house when you make the house your house. The reason why the prodigal son could come back to benefit was because that was his father's house. That is his father's house. Don't say, oh, this church is close to my house. Don't go to a church that is close to your house. Go to a church that is close to the Bible. Yes, Papa. 
Richie Pagan. Go to a church that where the spirit manifests itself. Where the spirit works. Go to that church. Don't go to the one close to your house. Is anybody hearing me? Yes. Every one of you that came, whether you are coming for the first time, I break you out from every curse that followed you here. Yes. Thus he had a lot of hosts. He yes. said, This church will see the prosperity they have never experienced before. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Pastors will prosper. Yeah. Members will prosper. Yeah. Workers will prosper. Yeah. For the advancement of the kingdom. I break the curse holding you. I break the powers that will not let you go. Go forward and succeed. Yeah. That's progress. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Viewers around the world, wherever you are watching from, every cause of sickness in your life, every cause of poverty, every spirit of concern by the power of the Holy Ghost, break free, break free, break free, break free, break free. Break free. Break free. Break free. Break free.